Metal bone, metal bone, metal bone, metal bone, metal bone. Ooh, a unique weapon. Shop at Shafi Jiva's Discount Awakening Weapon Emporium and have cool looking weapons today. So, you woke up this morning feeling like a kid sitting in front of a Christmas tree as you open up Monster Hunter World Iceborne and find a brand new Siege Dragon quest. You do it, you succeed, you return, you obtain rewards in the shape of Dracolite and Awakening weapons. Sit down and have a wait, Dracolite and Awakening weapons? What the fuck is going on? If this is a question that you have asked yourself about the Awakening weapons or the Awakening system, either just on the surface or even as in-depth as what all the different upgrades are and the numerical values associated with them, this is the video for you. Seriously, I no life this thing and turned off the outside world for two days. Starting off then with the undeniable start, the reward screen of the Siege. Here is where you get your Dracolite, which is the resource used to upgrade your weapons and also where you choose your weapons themselves. The higher your reward level for the Siege, which is based on met objectives such as parts broken, energy absorbed, reaching new areas, and actually getting the kill, the better rewards you get, meaning more and better quality Dracolite, a larger pool of weapons, and more choices of how many weapons you'd like to take with you. So which weapons should you take with you? Okay, so the attack's this, but it's got this element, oh my god, what's the thunder with it? What is the poison? This poison? Oh my god! Well, as far as weapon statistics, every single weapon across the board, regardless of weapon type, shares the following stats. 270 70 true raw attack, 5% affinity, a decent chunk of white sharpness, and a 4 slot. On top of this, every weapon rolls with either an element or a status, with the values varying not only between weapon types, but also across the individual statuses as well. The important thing to know here is that there is only one number that it can roll with for each individual status or element, so if you see, for example, a Thunder Longsword, you can rest assured that that is the best Thunder Longsword available. Also of note, there are no elementless weapons, which makes sense considering the big push for hunters to use statuses and elements in Iceborne. The roles that come on specific weapons for the more unique parts of a weapon are Switch Axe gets Power File Type, Gun Lance with Normal Shelling Level 5, but that can be changed afterwards, Hunting Horn rolls with these songs, but these also can change afterwards, Charge Blade rolls with Impact Files for Status Weapons and Power Elemental Files for Elemental Weapons, Insect Glaive rolls with Speed, which again can be changed afterwards, Light Bow Guns can roll with each element as a focus, meaning that it has Rapid Fire for said element. Though Heavy bow guns seem to come in Pierce 3, Spread 3, one for Fire and Thunder, one for Water and Ice, and one with Auto Reload Ammo for Normal. And finally, the bow rolls with Power and Close Range Coating, though once again, this can actually change after the fact. Put simply, this part of the system has an incredibly small amount of actual RNG, and every weapon is very carefully balanced to be as close to even with each other as possible. So on this screen, the only thing that you really have to do is pick the weapons that match both a weapon type type that you want and element slash status that you want on it. It really is that easy. Oh, I'm so happy! I'm so happy! This is the best day of my life! What you'll also notice is that these weapons come with five awakened ability slots, and on this screen, they have one already applied, as weapons roll with one innately. Though they can be overridden after the fact, so this doesn't need to be taken into consideration for which weapon you choose here, aside from it just being a nice bonus to already having a good ability on a weapon that you already want to choose. So what these abilities work out to be is sort of like a secondary weapon augment system, where you can use them to raise attack or defense and things like that, but you also have things like sharpness and even a set bonus, by which I mean choosing the set bonus one makes your weapon act as one piece towards a set bonus. So a weapon with Teostra technique, for example, would mean that you only need to wear two pieces of Teostra armor to get Master's Touch. What? 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 Which is just absolutely ridiculous. Each of these awakened abilities has a star rating, from one to what I'm going to call six stars because it's just five stars a second time, but glowing. Though I believe the game simply refers to these as special rarity abilities, which is simply too long a name for my taste, so six stars. These stars, for the most part, very accurately reflect the quality of the ability, but also reflect how rare it is to find. Each star of an ability counts towards your overall awakening level, meaning a weapon with a three star ability and a two star ability is awakened level 5, which is important for two reasons. Firstly, is actually the visuals of your weapon, which start off quite nice, very classy, but when you get your weapon to awakening level 23, your weapon will, for lack of a better word, awaken. Say the line, Bart! And on all the weapons, the cloth bits start glowing all crazy and flying around and the lighting effects get a serious overhaul. However, on some of the luckier ones, like this motherfucking hammer, oh my god, you get some serious 
this fucking beauty of weapon design. That said, this video is more about the statistical and system side of it all, but we will have a video on the channel very soon on the actual visuals of the Awakened weapons themselves too. Secondly, the actual system itself works sort of like upgrading your armor, you're using the Elder Melder, in that you have a number of items worth varying numbers of points, used to fill up a bar. In this case, Dracolite Shards are worth 1 point, Dracolite is worth 5 points, Large Dracolite is worth 20 points, and Rigid Dracolite is worth 50 points. This bar requires 8 points to fill from Awakening level 1 to 6, 15 points from level 7 to level 11, and then 20 points from level 12 onwards. When you fill the bar, you are presented with what the game refers to as a manifestation, which are three options from the Awakened ability pool. You can either choose one and put it on your weapon, either in an unoccupied slot, or to replace one that you don't want anymore, and each weapon has a total of five Awakened ability slots, but there are also a couple of other rules at play here. In order for a six-star ability to appear in the manifestation in the first place, you must already have the five-star version of said ability on your weapon. You can only have one six-star ability at a time, and trying to put a second one on will result in your old six-star ability being brought down to a five. You can also only have one set bonus ability per weapon, as well as two slot upgrade abilities per weapon, as there are only two possible extra slot locations. You can, however, have as many of the general stat ones as you want, so you can really tunnel in on a stat if you feel like it. For example, you can have four five-star attack mods and a six-star attack mod, which is just a ridiculous amount of extra attack. On this screen, you can also choose to not take any ability and quote-unquote store your potential, which is essentially a form of bad luck protection. You can store your potential up to 20 times, each time slightly increasing your chances of rarer and more valuable awakened abilities, and while the counter technically just keeps going up, this mechanic does gain its maximum effectiveness at 20. A neat bonus is that you actually gain levels of stored potential for a weapon by having it equipped when you complete objectives during the Safijiva Siege, so if you hunt the monster with the monster, you apparently absorb the monster's power, which considering the monster in question is actually really cool from a lore perspective as well. The general upgrades that all the weapons share then are as follows. Attack level 1 to 6 for a gain of 2 true raw per rank. Affinity level 1 to 6 for a gain of 2% affinity per rank. Slot level 1 to 4 for a gain of 1 slot level per rank. Defense 1 to 6 for a gain of 10 defense per rank. And depending on your weapon, either element or status 1 to 6, elements and statuses are where this actually gets sort of weird because it's wildly inconsistent, just like the actual values of the elements and statuses on the weapons themselves. But the most concise way I can put this is each rank can either be plus 10 or plus 20, except for the final rank, which is double whatever rank 5 was for plus 20 or plus 40. I <sighs> Melee weapons get sharpness level 1 to 6, which gives you an extra 10 hits of sharpness per rank. A sharpness 4 ability is actually enough to get 10 points of purple sharpness to appear on your weapon as well, with the final rank of every one of those skills being a 6 star ability. Excuse me, did somebody say star? The pool of set bonuses that you can get on these weapons is just the majority of the master rank set bonuses, with the ones that I have seen listed from the top of the smithy list down being Anjanath Dominus for stamina cap up, Ancient Divinity for critical status, Commission Alchemy for bombardier secret, Barioth Hidden Art for punishing draw, Rathalos Essence for mind's eye slash ballistics, Diablo's Ambition for slugger secret, Odogaron Essence for protective polish, Uragon Ambition for guard up, Nargakuga Essence for true razor sharp slash spare shot, Glavinous Essence for maximum might secret, Brecadillo's Essence for Agitator Secret, Tigrex Essence for Free Meal Secret, Basil Geese Ambition for Guts, Devil Joe Essence for Stamina Thief Secret, Velcana Divinity for Critical Element and Frostcraft, Val Solvane for Super Recovery, Teostra Technique for Master's Touch, Kushalade or a Flight for Nullify Wind Pressure, Kirin Divinity for Great Luck, Namiel Divinity for Element Acceleration, Shara Ishvalda Divinity for Gaia's Veil, Zora Magdaros Essence for Artillery Secret, Zenogar Essence for Late Power Secret, Gold Rathian Essence for Divine Power Secret and True Critical Status, Silver Rathalos Essence for Slayer Capacity Secret and True Critical Elements, Lunastra Essence for Tool Specialist Secret, Nergigante Ambition for Hasten Recovery, and Rajang's Rage for Mind's Eye Slash Ballistics and Protective Polish. The ones that I haven't personally seen but would assume are kicking around somewhere are Rathian Essence for Poison Duration Up and Legiana Ambition for Bow Charge Plus. I also haven't seen Instructor's Guidance for Capture Master or Guild Pride 
for Good Luck and Carving Master, though I don't expect to see them as they are from Arena Armor Sets. And I also haven't seen Safi Jiva's Armor Set bonus, but again, I wouldn't personally expect for that one to exist, though I could be proven wrong. If you have seen any of those bonuses that I haven't, please leave a comment so other people know, and because I know you love telling me when I'm incorrect and stupid. That's stupid! You're stupid! Stop being stupid! There are also a fairly large number of weapon-specific awakened ability, which as far as I'm concerned are generally really, really cool. Hunting Horn is probably the most customizable weapon here by far, as, and I'll have these slowly flashing by here, you can actually change your initial song list to 14 separate and different song lists through awakened abilities, with attack melody 1 to 4 being ones that focus around attack buffs, stamina 1 to 4 being ones that focus around stamina buffs, elemental 1 to 4 being ones that focus around elemental buffs, the abnormal status melody focusing around status buffs, and the earplugs melody focusing on earplugs. If you include the base song list for the weapon, that makes a total of 15 different sets of songs that you can choose from to have on your hunting horn. Good for you! Deeds. With the final levels of these song sets with four ranks being a five star ability, and the singular rank skill sets both counting as two star abilities. The song set that most people tend to run in the game, the old attack up large, defense up large song set, is actually attack melody number three, which is the four star variant. You can only have one of these melody abilities on your weapon at a time, so unfortunately no crazy song stacking will be done today. Gunlance gets shelling awakening abilities for each shelling type, with the ability to get level six of long and wide shelling, with the first rank simply changing your shelling type to level five of the selected type, and the second rank giving you level six of said shelling. The first rank of normal, however, brings you to level six normal shelling, and the second rank brings you to level seven. Switch Axe can change their power file out for an exhaust file of varying power, with level one being 180, and then going up 30 exhaust per rank up to the five star version, and then finally a six star version, which is worth 60 more points for a total of 360 exhaust. Insect Glaive gets Kinsect modifying abilities with stamina slash health boost and spirit slash strength boost at three and four stars respectively. Both light and heavy bowgun get a few bonus ones as well, with one that is just straight up the equivalent of having an extra bowgun mod slot, with the options being deviation suppressor, recoil suppressor, and reload assist, and you can only have one of these equipped at a time. You can also get awakened abilities for the bowguns that boost your ammo count, with the options being normal, spread, pierce, and elemental, and the ranks being one extra ammo at four stars, two extra ammo at five stars, and three extra ammo at six stars. Needless to say, bowguns are pretty fucking nuts right now. Nuts. 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 One slap, you got nuts. 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 And finally, Bow gets a status coding awakened ability type, with the four star being extra strong poison, the five star being that plus paralysis, and the six star version being both of these as well as sleep coding, so you get quite a bit of customization on this as well. As far as playing the system goes, there are a couple of ways to do this particularly efficiently, depending on what your goal is. If you just want to have this done as quickly as physically possible, you have a ton of Dracolite and just want your specific upgrades as soon as possible, then you should immediately grab the things that you want at the lowest level they are available available to you, as seeing an upgraded version of an ability you already have is more likely than just seeing that straight up ability, as it adds it to the pool. For example, in the base pool, let's say there is one version of attack 2, however if you put attack 1 on your weapon, the pool now has add attack 2 as well as upgrade attack 2, as the add option can be applied to the weapon in a different slot, whereas the upgrade version can only be applied to the one that is already one star below it. And this next part may just be a coincidence, but I did feel like I was seeing the upgrade Upgrade options a lot more frequently than the peer add options as well. Doing this, you can just barrel through here and grab what you want in a matter of minutes, assuming you have the Dracolite to fuel your mad with power spending spree. Alternatively, and I imagine a lot of us will be caring more about this method for the first little while, if you want to use the least Dracolite possible, the most bang for your buck, so to say, you want to focus on your set bonus first. Specifically, you want to make sure that you stay at awakening level 6 or below by storing your potential until you have the set bonus that you want, as these are the hardest to find, and this is the period during which your manifestations cost the least points possible. That said, as long as you stay at 6 or below, you're good to grab whatever you want. After you have your set bonus, you want to focus on whatever your 6 star skill will be, as this will be the next hardest thing to acquire, and awakening level 6 to 11 is the next bracket of Dracolite cost. After this point, it all costs the same, and the rest of your upgrades should be about as equivalently rare, so just grab the things that you want, and upgrade them as they pop up. Finally, though this is one of the best details, if you go to the Elder Melder, you'll notice a couple of new options. Hello! In the form of Sealing Alchemy and Awakening Alchemy. Awakening Alchemy lets you trade in Safi 
Jiva parts for new awakened weapons to add to your collection. And Sealing Alchemy allows you to trade in the weapons you don't actually want for Dracolite. On the surface, this is just a neat little quality of life thing. But what this actually means is that every little thing that you do on the Safi Jiva hunt affects your weapon progression, and you'll have a good reason to even carve him long after you craft his armor set, as you can turn his materials into more weapons. And you also have a system here to full on recycle all the shitty weapons as well into points to use to power up the weapons that you do like. This right here is the cherry on top, people. As far as I'm concerned, this is what makes this siege truly feel infinitely completable. And because of this, I honestly think as long as we have weapons that we want new awakening abilities on, the Safi Jiva siege will never really feel like a chore because every single aspect of it goes towards getting you the upgrades that you want. And that's it. That's everything. The entire system, as in-depth as I could get and as concisely as I could phrase it. And if you actually want to know my opinion on it, it's fucking great. This whole thing blows cult... This whole thing blows the entirety of Kul Taroth out of the water. The siege fight itself is fantastic, and the whole awakening system after is interesting, engaging, deep, and significantly rewarding. I have absolutely no complaints. All right, everyone, I've been Cotton Dinosaur, and this has been everything you need to know about the Safi Jiva weapons and the awakening system. Do you like the system as much as I do? What crazy build are you going to go for first with these weapons? Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies Ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. This is the brand new outro to tell you all the things that you do that we love. So let's start with something simple and say, oh, we love your eyes. When they're watching us play video games, when we make a bunch of jokes that are kind of lame. Or when they gaze upon our failures as we try to kill the monsters or important, important news about the kingdom and Amelia. Rage, Cotton, and Hollow are all here talking about the things you want to hear. So if you want to be the first to hear, like and subscribe and the bell and we'll cheer. Some of you are patrons, even though we are all the noobs and you're the pros. There's nothing we can do to thank you. No, really, there's nothing. Nothing we could possibly do. Goodbye.